Brian Koberger was on the lam for about seven weeks before he was arrested. Think of all the people that he came into contact with, classmates, neighbors, neighbors in Washington, neighbors in Pennsylvania, people upstairs, downstairs, people at the rest stop. Wow. Imagine if that was you. Phil Waters is a retired homicide detective with the Houston Police Department. And during his career, he's investigated more than 400 homicide cases. I thought about you with this question. It just seems like such a long time when they had that, that, that sheath with the DNA on it and the car and the pings of the cell phones, etc. This guy was able to go to class for a couple weeks. He was able to travel the country, go shopping. Um, it, it seems just scary that he was in front and beside and sometimes alone with a lot of people. Well, true, but I will tell you this, this in terms of time from an investigative standpoint for from uh, my experience and being involved in this type of an investigation, I can tell you that the the thing that I've said all along that was going to break this case was the hard work and the due diligence of these detectives. They didn't stop. And this case brought it to this point of arresting this evil doer, I'm telling you, this was a rapid, rapid accumulation of evidence. They were able to put in the affidavit. They accumulated all those affirmative links. And he was under surveillance, I think, from the time that they realized that this is going to be where the evidence is leading them to. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I hope, right? Especially if you're a classmate well, or if you're I'm, using a public bathroom I'm, with them. Wow. Holy cow. Okay, I only have a minute, but I um, the Dylan piece, uh, you know, Dylan Mortensen sees him walking towards her and then turning and going out the door and then she retreats in and closes the door. Is it possible that the police sent us a red herring with the information from the next morning? The, the roommates get up and they're trying to wake up their roommate and they call their friends and then they're, you know, they call the police and say there's an unconscious person. Is it possible all that's a red herring? I don't think I'd call it a red herring. I think I would call it a uh, dissemination of information that was needed to uh, be be framed in that particular way to protect that witness to begin with and to not let on. I mean, there's certain things you're not going to release to the media. And and I will tell you, I think those decisions were were well made in this particular case. Uh, I've got 10 seconds left here, but do you think the police were there at four in the morning or do you think he really didn't get there till 11 in the morning? 10 seconds left. I don't know. I don't know. And that will yeah. come out eventually in the uh, in the trial, those those types of uh, particulars. Phil Waters, as always, it's so great to have you. And I'm going to have you back because of the breaking news tonight. Um, we had to cut our interview a little shorter, but I still have a thousand questions for you, given this affidavit. Thank you, sir. Appreciate well, it. I'll try to have a thousand answers for you, Ashley. I know you'll have a thousand and one. Phil Waters joining us can, tonight. Can I say one Four hundred homicide quick? cases. Can well, I, I got two thing? seconds to black. Two seconds to black. Okay. Go. I want to give Yikes. incredible kudos to the police department, okay. Chief Frog, and all those folks. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Job. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.